my name is Kath and this channel is called Step In Deeper and my goal is to just bring you deeper into your walk with God by going a little bit deeper into the word. We're going to look up uh, some <clears throat> of the Hebrew today so I've got my supplies here ready to go and I'm going to show you how to look up words again today uh, just as a refresher in case someone is new to the channel. Um, so we're going to start, we're going to be going through Psalm 65 today, <clears throat> but we're going to start by prayer and by looking at a verse in the Bible. Um, I love praying the Word of God, and um, we are to that point where uh, I think we need that before we read the Word. It's always good to pray before you study the Word. And so we're going to look at a verse from Psalm 119, and uh, we are going to look at verse one. 72. May my tongue sing of your word, for all of your commands are righteous. Lord, your word is righteous. Your word is true. It is faithful and it is something that we can depend on. And I am so thankful for that. So Lord, I pray that as we read your word again, that you would give us understanding, enlightenment, and that we would I just want to praise you and honor you as we read and study your word. Amen. All right, so let us read Psalm 65. And the um, first thing we do after we read a psalm is we try to figure out what category it is. And I think that this one's going to be pretty evident as we read it. So praise awaits you, our God in Zion. To you, our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. When you were overwhelmed by sins, when we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those who choose to bring, you choose to bring near, to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds. God, our hope, God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas who form the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength. Who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. When morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the grain, the people with grain, so you have, over, so you have ordained it. You drench its furrow and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. Now, after after going through so many recently uh, prayers for help, this one is very different, which is nice to have a little bit of a break from those prayers for help. This one is... A Thanksgiving Psalm. So we're going to write Thanksgiving Psalm. And then I categorize it just a little bit. I mean, really the whole Psalm is about worship and praising God. But if you want to break it down and put a little bit of structure on it, verses one through four are acts of forgiveness. So <clears throat> we're worshiping for his acts of forgiveness. Then verses five through eight and again, um, this went from five through six. So I wrote it here and then I wrote it again up here. It's his acts of power because it goes through verse eight. Depends on how your Bible is broken down. And I'm using these pages and not my Bible because I've already written in my Bible. Um, so, and these pages are attached if you did want to do it this way. And then nine through 13 is his acts of grace. And so the whole psalm is praising God for things that he has done, which is a great follow-up to what we've been reading, all these prayers for help, and now we have this, um, I, I'm ready to praise you. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look up some of these words um, that mean praise. And I wanted to point out too, just as a remembrance, we are in the middle of the Psalms that are called Elohist Psalms. So often when you see the word God, it's the word Elohim, 
instead of the word Yahweh, which we saw in earlier Psalms. But this book of the Bible is the uh, talks about Elohim more often. It's uh, more of a general term for God. It's the Hebrew God. Um, but it was a more general term for God as opposed to Yahweh being a much more intimate name for God. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up a few of these words. I thought it would be good to look up the word praise. Um, there are several different uh, definitions for the word praise. Depends on which Hebrew word is used. So it's always good to look up praise. Uh, and then I thought it would be good to look up um, when we are overwhelmed by sins. Because we know that there are three words for sin, um, pesha, avon, and chata, uh, three different Hebrew words for sin, and it's always good to know which one that is. And so I thought that would be good to look up. And then I thought, maybe we should just look up the word forgave. What does the word forgive mean? I thought it might look, just look up that one um, in the Hebrew. And then I also wanted to look up the word transgressions. And that'll be in this beginning section. And then when we get down to five through eight, I also want to look up the word awesome. I think we use that word very flippantly, and I think it would be nice to see what that word means. So those are all the words that we're going to look up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two different things. I'm going to show you the app that I use, how I look it up, and then I'm also going to show you how I write it in my Bible. So um, I use an app called Bible Hub. <clears throat> And there are a couple other apps out there. Uh, Blue Letter Bible is another really good app for this, but I love Bible Hub and that's what it looks like. So when you click on Bible Hub, <clears throat> you get this general screen first. And I'm gonna type in Psalm 65 because that is the Psalm that we're studying. <clears throat> and then I typed it in and then there's a button here, search. So I'm gonna click search and then Psalm 65 comes up. And it's basically the whole Psalm. Now, what I want to do is break down certain words and certain um, phrases and uh, verses so we don't really want to look at the whole psalm, but that's how it'll come up at first. And then there's different tabs across here. If you pick parallel, um, P-A-R, parallel, it will show you verse 1 first, and then it'll show you all the versions of it, which I actually like to do sometimes because that helps me to see if I don't understand a verse how to look it up in the different versions, or to see the different versions, and maybe that'll give me some more understanding. But what we're going to look at for our purposes is the H-E-B Hebrew. So we're going to click on Hebrew, and then what it does is it starts to separate it. If I click up here, see how it's got all the Psalms here that I can list, but when it gets to 65, now it, it breaks it down into all the verses because that's where I'm at. So the word praise is in verse 1. So I'm going to hit verse 1. So it's in verse 1. Then over here it says 65, 1. <clears throat> and then what it does is it has a chart. And this is all of the words in verse 1. And it says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, a song, praise is awaiting you. Okay, now I want to look up the word praise. Um, and as you can see, just... So here's the word praise right here. So there's the word praise. And there is the Hebrew or the Strong's number. So I'm going to click the Strong's number. And then I get this wonderful chart or this thing here with it describes what it means. So I'm going to move this for a second. And I'm going to show you how I write all this information down. Now, I love using different colored markers. So that's what I do. Or pens, I mean. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the word praise. And then I write the Strong's number 8416. And I write the Hebrew word, and it is Tehillah. T-E-H-I-L-L-A-H. Tehillah. Tehillah. Okay, and what does it mean? It says it means, and I'm going to show you so that um, you can see this. You'll get a general definition up here, but then if you go down farther, you'll get it broken down more, and they'll give you more words, and then they'll give you all kinds of verses where that word is used. So it means a song of praise. So instead of just praise, it means a song of praise. So a song of praise. A song awaits God. Instead of just, I'm going to say, I praise you, I'm going to sing. That That's what that one means. Um 
Praise awaits you, O God, in Zion, Jerusalem. To you our vows will be fulfilled. The things that I have promised I will do, I will do, is what he's saying. You are the God who answers prayer. To you all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins. So let's look up that word sins. And that is verse 3. So now we're in Bible Hub. We, we're in where we look up the word Tehla, and we're going to come down to this arrow down here, and we're going to click on that arrow. If you click on the X up here, it's going to go back, and you're going to have to start all over. I don't want to do that, so I want to click on the arrow down here, and all that does is take me back to my chart. And then I want to go to verse 3. So I can either click up here and pick verse 3, or I can choose this arrow and go to 3, and now I'm in verse 3. And they're saying it's the word iniquities here. Um, so I'm going to click on that Strong's number, and then I'm going to write down this information. It's the word avon. So we're going to write down, and I usually write it like here's praise, so I wrote the word praise. Sin is here, so I'm going to write sin right here. So the word sin is the Strong's number 5771, and it is A-V-O-N, Avon is how it's pronounced, and it means iniquity, guilt. So iniquity, which is another hard word for me to understand. Guilt makes more sense to me. <clears throat> and it also can mean punishment, but now... A while ago, on one of our uh, one of our psalms, we went through and talked about the difference between <clears throat> the three words that mean sin. And what I did in my Bible is I have a, a place in my Bible where I put a tab that says sin, iniquity, and transgression. And if you go to that page, I have sin, iniquity, and transgression, all mapped out what it means. And then I also even have, go to page 681 in my Bible. And if you go to page 681, I actually have another chart that goes through and shows you the difference between those words again, because I think it's important to know the difference between those words. So I have this chart here that tells me what the word chata means, what the word avon means, and what the word pasha means. And those are the three words that we see often in the Psalms. Those have been attached to other videos that I have done. Uh, if you look up, I think it's Psalm 62 that may have been attached in there so that you've got that. But what I'm going to do on my paper here is uh, I'm going to write one of the other phrases that we saw in our notes, and that was that avon is a twisting, an intentional twisting of God's standards. So I want to write that down. Intentional twisting of God's standards. So this is more like a premeditated, I know what I'm doing. So when we were overwhelmed with that, you forgave us. So we're going to look up the word forgave. And again, we are on Avon. So we're going to come down here and push that arrow, come back up to our our verse, and we have to remember that we this is all verse 3, right? So my NIV says, when we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. This version says, when our iniquities prevailed against us, as for our transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. So the forgiveness part, see, you have to kind of analyze. I don't see the word forgive, but I know that this is forgive. So that's going to be a definition for me already when I write that down. So provide atonement for. So I'm going to click on the Strong's number right here, 3722. And we're going to come up here and we've got the Strong's number and the word. So we're going to write that all down. So forgave is 3722. And the word is kafar, K-A-P-H-A-R. And the first thing I want to write down is provide atonement for, because that was the version that they had that that was written in there. And I thought that that was good. So provide 
atonement for, but then also it says to cover over or to appease. So that's forgive. So provide atonement for, to cover or to appease. And then it, you forgave our transgressions. And I want to look up transgressions and see which word that one is. I know it's probably not a vone, and so we want to see what that one is. So I'm going to write transgressions, and then back to my app. I'm going to go back down to my arrow, and there's the word transgressions. So I'm going to click on here, 6588. So that tells me, if I look here, this is 57. 71, so this is a different word because it's a different uh, Strong's number. It's the Strong's number 6588, and it is the word Pesha. P E S H A Pesha. So that's the word. And um, the definition for this one is in here, in he uh, on this. It says rebellion, rebellious acts, but then it keeps using the word transgression, which doesn't help me when I'm trying to find the definition for transgression and it's telling me the definition, the definition is transgression. Rebellion makes more sense to me. So I am going to write down rebellion. And then again, from my previous charts that I made, I also know that this is willful trespassing. So this is, again a choice that I know what I'm doing wrong and I'm doing it anyway. And that's the sin that he's saying God forgives. When we were overwhelmed by our iniquity and in our intentional twisting of God's standards, you provided atonement even for my rebellion, my willful trespassing. To me, that just, just makes it more understandable as far as what God did for us. And again, that's why I praise him. That's why I worship him. So that's all on under the category of the acts of forgiveness. Now we're going to look at his acts of power. You answer us. So there's one of his acts of power um, with awesome and righteous deeds. So let's look up the word awesome. And if you want, I'll write down righteous, but I, I'm going to assume it's the word tzedek, which we have seen many, many times. But, um, but I will look just to make sure as we look that one up too. So this is now verse 5. So we're going to go back up into our um, app and we're going to click on the arrow. And we're um, at verse 3, so we're going to want to go to 4, 5, okay? And then it says... By awesome deeds in righteousness, you will answer us. And I'm going to look at righteous, and I can see by that, it's sedic, um, which is the word for righteousness that we have seen so many times. It's doing what is right, but it's also generosity and caring for the poor uh, and those who are oppressed. And then we're going to look up awesome. Okay, so let's, it's 3372, so we're going to click on that. And we're going to write that down first, and then I'll show you the meaning. So awesome is 3372, and the Hebrew word is yare, and it is spelled Y-A-R-A, Y-A-R-E, and it means to fear. Um, I think sometimes we look at... Um, the word awesome, and we think, oh, it's great. You know, we, we use that to mean something different. But the word awesome is basically full of awe, and awe often is fear. So God answers us with, with uh, deeds that can cause us to fear because we are not able to do the things that God can do. So it makes us uh, give him the proper reverence. Because we don't, we know we can't do that. And his deeds are right. And his deeds are generous and caring for those that are oppressed. So that's basically what it's saying there. Um, you answer us with awesome and righteous deeds. Uh, and I'll just write the word sedic in there too. T-S-E-D-E-K. And that's the word that's righteous. 
Um, God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth, of the farthest seas who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength. So we're talking here about God being the controller, uh, the creator of the world. And um, as we've seen and we will see, uh, that word seas, when we talk about water, uh, often in the Bible, it's the, the in the Hebrew in the in, in ancient times they looked at water as chaos and because they couldn't control it, and yet God is the controller of the seas, so He is the controller of the chaos. Um, the one who forgives is also the one who plants the mountains. Um, he controls the seas and the people. So we're seeing God's forgiveness, and then we're jumping right into His power as a warrior and his power as the controller of creation. So, and it's, you see this up here, he's still the roaring water. So there's again, that uh, controlling the chaos, uh, the roaring waves, the turmoil of the nation. So he's also in control of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonder. So there it is again, that awe. So let's look that up and just see if that one is also Yare, because that's one thing that I will do sometimes when I see it. So I'm in Yare right now, but we're going to go down to the bottom. And okay, and we're going to go back um, and look up that word again and just see like, is it so Yare, we're going to go back and we're going to go to what is that verse? Um, the whole earth is filled with the awe of your wonder. So we're going to go to verse 8 and see if it's the same word. Come on, 7 and 8. See what it says? They are afraid who dwell in the farthest parts. Okay, so they are afraid. And I can go over here, 3372, that is the same. Okay, so when we looked up awesome earlier, it was 3372 Yare. And so this is the same thing. The whole earth is filled with fear, this awesome fear, this awesome reverence at your wonders, or this version says at your signs. Um, so again, we are seeing what God is doing and there should be an and awe um, of his power. And that is a verse that I would put a banner on this one. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. So when I talk about a banner, it's just, um, I love to draw banners about my verses, the ones that I think are ones that I'm going to want to go back to and find later again because they mean something to me or they just jumped out at me or something like that. And so I'll just put a banner around it and color it in. And I think that that's a good one to do that with. So then the last section, 9 through 13, and we're calling it Acts of Grace. But what it is is just how God takes care of us. You care for the land and you water it. So there's one way that God takes care of us. He's the one that's bringing the rain. He's the one that's caring for the land. So it's just a beautiful picture of the fact that our God is involved with us on this earth, that he has not abandoned us. Um, and, and it just goes through this whole thing about um, you care for the land, you enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide so here we're seeing he, let's do this in, a, in orange. So you care for the land, you provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty. See, everything's growing <clears throat> because of you, because of God. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The mountains are covered with flocks. It's such a picture here of abundance um, because God is in control, because God is um, taking care of things that we cannot. I cannot make it rain. I cannot make things grow. I And that that is up to God. And so that's why this psalm is such a beautiful psalm of thanksgiving and a, a call again to praise God.
um, because of who he is and because of what he does. Um, and even creation cries out and sings uh, because of who this God is and the goodness that we see in providing for us. So God, we come before you, um, not this time as a prayer for help, but as a prayer of thanksgiving, just saying thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you are doing for us on a daily basis that we are not even aware of. Thank you that you provide for us. Um, thank you that you forgive us, Lord. And I pray that we will stand in awe of you every day of our lives for the things that you have done and are doing. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Look below and see the different documents that you might need to uh, put in your Bible. And uh, I just thank you for studying the Word of God with me today.